Don't laugh. Every year for their anniversary, my parents throw a costume party, and they invite half the town and every relative, and I'm sure those that aren't invited crash the party. It's the social event of the year, and each year my parents try to make it bigger and more spectacular than the previous year, which means that me and my older brother are always roped into helping. I'm Dylan Newley, a junior in computer science with a minor in Spanish. Fortunately, I can take my classes remotely, or else I'd have to drive to the extension service in nearby Missoula. We live in Montana. Half my friends are Hispanic, so I kind of learned Spanish growing up. And besides, job opportunities triple if you are fluent in a second language. Which meant I got my current job working at Men's Style Emporium easily. Besides, I get a great discount on clothes. I have a choice to make. Life in Triple Falls means I'm going nowhere, but I'm happy. Leaving here would mean life would be completely different, and I might be unhappy. I didn't have a reason to leave, so why take a chance? Let's talk about my parents' party. With my best friend, Eduardo's, help, I'm dressing in a white, old-style tuxedo with white accessories, a white cape, and a white cane. Can't forget the white top hat. Eduardo helped me with the ghostly makeup and my hair. He works as a hairstylist and makeup consultant when he isn't playing dress-up. Can you guess what I am? I'm a ghost. Eduardo is also coming to the party, but he's a southern belle straight out of some steamy historical romance novel. You know, the dirty kind. With a big pink hooped skirt, a pink bustle with a giant bow, and a pink cotton candy wig that he spent hours styling. He had to show me his shoes the moment they came in. Pale pink, four inch, platform stilettos. I'm sure those are historically accurate. Eduardo was already taller than me. Now he towered. I could never figure out what pronouns he preferred, and he never said anything, so I left it at he and him. His eyes were styled with pale green eyeshadow and little diamonds. He'd waxed his eyebrows to be the perfect shape, waxed his chest and armpits to be silky smooth, and he's ready to break hearts, like mine. But I'm not his type. He is cute, no doubt about it, but we're not dating. Eduardo's type is rugged, tough, alpha male football players with enough muscles to bench press a semi-truck and at least a V8 under the hood and they need to smell like they've just left the gym and they have barely enough brains to close the refrigerator door. He likes his men muscled and sexy, but brains are an optional extra. He doesn't date fashion challenge to nerds like me who have never stepped into a gym and actually use our brains as more than just paperweights. He's shown me the guys on his computer, hot and sexy, with chests the size of a barn door and arms that could double as pile drivers. I'd sleep with them for a night of fun, but I prefer someone more svelte and streamlined and can hold a conversation about other things than dumbbells and protein powders. It's a plus if they actually know what a mesh router is. That's who I'd fall in love with. Did I mention that my folks' party is for adults only? No kids allowed. Whoa, 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 don't get the wrong idea. It's on account of the house. My folks inherited this big old gothic mansion from my grandparents that, even after we cleaned it up, it still looks like something out of the Adams family. It was too big for Grandpa and Grandma to take care of, so they took off for Miami. Mom and Dad fixed it up, conscripting me and my brother into helping, 
and it is a show place now. Well, the first floor is. I know how to work with tools, and I used a lathe back in high school woodworking class. I'd remade a couple of stair railing posts and lacquered the front wooden staircase, railing, and floorboards myself. Like Eduardo often teases, I like to work with wood. Don't be as dirty-minded as he is. I like creating things, making things, building things. Life is good here in Triple Falls, Montana. There is really only one bully I had to worry about. The captain of the old high school football team, Craig Small. But his folks sent him to live in Nevada the October of our senior year because he and his dad, Sheriff Derek Small, got into a huge fight because Craig felt he deserved his own truck. Rumor is that it got heated and violent. But those are rumors, and I'm glad high school is four years in the rearview mirror. The costume party was held in the combo entrance hall, living room, and dining room. We call it the Grand Hall. It was at least half a basketball court in size, with handmade hardwood paneling and dark hardwood floors with an antique chandelier hanging above it. Mom had found a bunch of antique Tiffany lamps which she spaced around the room. Though many of the rooms in our house weren't finished, the grand hall shined like the showcase it was always meant to be. That took a lot of work. Dressed as a tuxedo-clad ghost, I descended the staircase with Eduardo in his pink gown and pink wig lightly hanging on my arm. We made quite the handsome couple, except we weren't a couple. More than a couple of heads turned our way, though. Forgive me, Eduardo whispered, giggling. But I've invited someone I think you'll like. I've met him recently. I thought he was my type. But he is definitely yours. You're welcome. And what is my type? I asked. Flannel. Eduardo sneered. Geek chic with a nerd fashion sense. You'll swoon for sure. And best yet, he knows which end of a hammer hits the nail, if you know what I mean. Just your type. I predict somebody is in for a little bit of bang-bang action tonight. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. You set me up on a surprise blind date? Who is it? I asked. Since you're so smart, he whispered, a teasing edge in his voice. I think you'll figure it out. You've got raincoats for your Johnny, right? I rolled my eyes and said, Yes, Mom. Little Johnny has his raincoat. Do you? Eduardo gave me a wicked smile and said, This purse isn't for show, you know. I chuckled and said, How will I know who my blind date is anyway? Eduardo gave me a wicked smile. He looks just like you. Excuse me, there's this man by the punch bowl with arms I die for. Have fun, I said. I wandered around the party, looking for somebody who looked like a skinny computer geek dressed in faded Levi's and plaid long sleeve flannel shirts. I might work at a fashion clothes store, but none of it has stuck to me. So, Look for a guy, dressed in Levi's and flannel. Maybe big glasses, though I don't wear glasses. And bad hair. I never take care of my hair. It grows. I only get it cut when Eduardo complains, or it gets in my eyes. It's longish now, and only looks good because Eduardo styled it himself. Nobody at the party wore old Levi's and a flannel shirt, so I mingled. I got several compliments on my costume and makeup, and Eduardo had made me look classy with the top ad. Was I Eduardo's walking billboard of what he could do? Eduardo stood by the punch bowl, flirting with a man dressed as a football player, including pads. He was right. The guy had nice, defined pecs and big arms and a neck as big as a tree trunk. Definitely. Eduardo's type. 
Mom was Cleopatra with the wig and everything, and Dad was a tall, skinny Napoleon. I take after Dad like that. They and a few other couples were dancing in the middle of the grand hall. Still, I couldn't find anybody in Levi's and a flannel shirt, except a middle-aged guy dressed like an old-time train robber with a huge mustache and big gun and a gray flannel shirt who quietly spoke with another man dressed like that fast food fried chicken restaurant spokesperson in an all-white suit, white hair, and a white goatee, including an old cane. The train robber was Sheriff Derek Small, and the man in white was our mayor, Robert Bunsen, both friends of my dad. The mayor's wife, Madeline Bunsen, dressed in an old-style ball gown and stood next to Mayor Bunsen. Word is that Sheriff Small was recently estranged from his wife. As far as I knew, nobody had heard anything about Craig for four years. Assuming he was 17 when he left, he'd be 21 now, same as me. Just my luck. Sheriff Small was the only person in the room wearing flannel. Surely Eduardo didn't mean him. I'm not into older guys let alone the dad of my old high school bully. My dad, Clark Newley, is the daytime dispatcher for the town, as in he coordinates fire, police, ambulances, city maintenance trucks, and whatever. In a way, Sheriff Small and Mayor Bunsen are both kind of his bosses. I glared at Eduardo giving him the death stare, but he was too busy flirting with the sexy football stud. I'd get even later. Somehow. Maybe Mom needed help in the kitchen. I sighed. This was going to be a long, 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 boring night. And then it wasn't. I understand you know a little about computers, a voice said behind me. Specifically, I need some advice about high-end quality graphics cards because my system has difficulty with the resolution settings for some games, and Eduardo said you could help me. I turned and was gloriously surprised. I couldn't have been more wrong about the computer geek thing. He wore a white fitted tuxedo with a white bow tie with a white cape and white top hat and white cane with an ornate silver handle. Instead of makeup, he wore some kind of cloth mask that covered his whole head. Somehow, he had a monocle attached. It sounded like he was nervous with the way his voice wavered. His tuxedo blatantly refused to hide the fact that this man had a nice chest and a narrow waist, and his arms filled out the sleeves of his jacket. This man must run for fun. I bet if I felt his abs... I'd find a comfortably slim waist with a six-pack. I bet he was smiling under his mask when he said, Don't ask me why, but Eduardo wanted me to tell you that a mesh router is the central router attached to a modem, with enough routers wirelessly linked to it to create enough coverage to handle either a very large house or a series of offices. Hmm. It sounded like he had a brain to go with that body. The only thing I knew about him were his brilliant, beautiful, sexy green eyes, and he knew about computers. Across the room, Eduardo stifled a giggle and gave me a nod. This sexy hunk in a mask was my blind date. Thank you, Saint Eduardo. I promise to be a good boy tonight. Maybe not. Stop the presses. The stranger and I both wore the same costume. It hit me. Eduardo had not only helped me with my costume, he must have helped the stud. This wasn't a blind date. This was a setup. Somehow, I didn't think I would mind. Hi, I said. I'm Dylan. I know. Dylan Newley, he said. We went to high school together. Just call me Ghost. While we're at it, Eduardo told me about how you refinished the staircase. You do beautiful work. You're a man of many talents. 
What kind of fun mystery game was Eduardo playing? I said, flattery will get you anything you want. How about we talk about this on the dance floor? Tell me how you know Eduardo. Besides going to school with you guys, Ghost said, I arrived in town a few days ago and accidentally met him at the diner. We got to talking. Next thing I know, he's inviting me to the party and fixing me up with a costume. His slightly rapid way of speaking and the way he kept glancing around made me think he was scared. Did he not want to be seen with a gay man? Or was it simply first date jitters? How many times had I acted just like this on a first date? Too many. I couldn't help but smile. Something humorous, he asked. Just imagining what's under the mask beside your green eyes, I said, hoping some casual flirting would help him relax a little. I couldn't tell if he was smiling, but he quickly glanced at Sheriff Small. Maybe someone had had a recent run-in with the law and didn't want to face the sheriff. Why don't we go outside and get some air, he said. I shrugged, took his hand and said, sure. We walked out to the side lawn, found a bench, and stared at the slim crescent moon just peeking over the horizon. Our house is a little outside of town, away from lots of lights, and it let the stars come out to play. He pointed up to the sky and said, Do you see the Big Dipper? Everybody knows that if you follow the line made by the front stars, you find the North Star. I followed the stars and found the bright star called Polaris. Found it. If you follow the curve of the tail, you find a bright golden star, Arcturus. It's the bottom star for Boaties, he said. Booties, I said, like the baby shoe? No, he said. Boaties, the herdsman. It's Greek. Found it, I said. He squeezed my hand and softly said, Just a little to the left and up just a tiny bit, on a clear night you can see a circle of seven stars. It looks like the letter C lying down. Tonight, because of the haze, you can only see five stars. I should have brought some binoculars, but I wasn't planning on stargazing. That's the constellation Corona Borealis, my favorite one. I looked and found the little circle of stars and said, It's nice. What were you planning on doing? I came to see you, he said, uncomfortably silent. His hand tightly clenched the side of the bench. In a voice just barely above a whisper, he said, I came to apologize and explain. We knew each other a long time ago, but we weren't friends. I nodded and said, Is that why you're wearing the mask? I didn't want you running away before I had a chance to explain, he said, unable to look at me. Safely hidden behind the mask, his voice subtly warbled with an intense emotion. I know you hate me, and I don't blame you, Ghost said. I don't know why I needed to do this. It's weird, I know, but I had to say I'm sorry. I took a sharp, deep breath and waited, a little puzzled. My whole life, I wanted to please my dad, Ghost said. It's why I played football, but I'm gay. Dad didn't like gay guys, so I did everything to prove I wasn't gay including picking on the guy I crushed on. I became a jerk. The kicker is no matter how much I denied it, I was still gay. I was so afraid to talk to you. Me, the big, tough football star, is afraid to talk to someone because my dad would disapprove. Then what happened, I said. He gulped the air, and I was afraid he'd stop speaking. When he did speak, the pain in his voice brought tears to my eyes. One of the guys on the team is by. You remember Dean? I asked him out at the end of our junior year, but it had to stay a secret. It was the best six months of my life. My senior year, just before fall semester midterms. Dad caught me making out with Dean. Dad waited until Dean had left, and then he went ballistic. Said a lot of things, called me a lot of things, and... Ghost stopped speaking and took a deep, painful breath. I waited. 
afraid of what he would say next. Ghost spoke soft and panicky, and the words gushed out. Dad kicked me out, right there on the spot. Mom called her brother in Nevada for help, and he came to get me. And I missed the end of football season, had to change schools, lost all my friends. I don't even like football anymore. Too many memories. I had never heard such despair in a voice before, and I guessed who this was. My spine stiffened, and I sat a little taller. I remembered my old fears of this man, but kicked them out of my mind. You're Craig Small, aren't you? I asked. He removed the top hat and pulled the mask off. Even in the darkness, I could see the pain in his eyes. Dylan, please don't run away, he begged. Please don't hate me. I held my breath and remembered the bully from high school. Mean, loud, taunting. Changing subjects, I asked, Does your dad know you're here? No. Mom and dad split up and she lives in Missoula, Craig said. I visited her last week and talked to her. But not your dad, I asked. Craig's mouth tightened as he fought the emotion. I'm too scared of what he would do. The word is you and your dad fought because you wanted to get a truck, I said. Then you left town when he said no. Mom told me that, but Dad lied, Craig softly said. The old fear I once had of this man warred with the damaged soul in front of me. I remembered coming out to my parents, the sheer terror I felt, and the relief that gushed through me when Mom said, Now that that's done, let's celebrate. Pork chops are still your favorite, right? And guess what I bought last weekend? I'll go down to the store and buy a cake, Dad said. Let's party. And my brother said, That's not fair. If I come out and tell you I'm straight, do I get a party? Mom laughed and said, If Dylan comes out as gay and we throw him a party, it's only fair that if you come out as straight, we throw you a party too. Dad hugged me and my brother and said, I'll buy two cakes and a bunch of candles, even get a couple of bottles of Martinelli's sparkling apple juice. It will be our coming out party. After all, one son came out as gay, while the other came out as straight. That was the best night of my life, but I guess I'm one of the lucky ones with loving parents and a big brother that has my back. Craig didn't have that. I didn't understand all he had gone through, trying to please his father and pretend he was straight, but I understood enough. The bitterness and resentment I had once felt for Craig disappeared. And I whispered, I'm sorry for your pain. There's been enough hate. We'll start fresh right now. Hi, I'm Dylan Newley. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Craig Small. He leaned back, staring into the night sky, and something wet trickled from his eye and slowly crept down his cheek to fall and make a small round water stain near his knee. I changed my name, he said. It's Craig Curtis, Mom's maiden name. I took his hand and held it, while his mouth tried to flicker into a melancholic smile. He fought some emotion, and some instinct told me he needed a hug. I hugged him, feeling his uneven breaths shake his body. It was a moment before Craig calmed down. Better? I asked. I'm sorry about high school, he said. Whispering in his ear, I said, You can make it up to me by dancing with me. Baby ice cream later. My dad's in there, he said. I nodded, took his hand, and in the middle of the lawn, we held each other and danced. It didn't matter what music was played inside. We simply slow danced under the stars, my arms about his waist, his arms hugging me about my shoulders. He told me about the stars and how incredible they are out in the desert and about living with his uncle, about Las Vegas, about college in Nevada. I told him about restoring the house, about my job at the clothing store, about the gay scene here in Triple Falls. It became an incredibly healing moment. If life had been kinder, maybe we could have been friends way back when. As we held each other, I could feel Craig relaxing, 
easing closer to me, as if I were protecting him. Weird thought. Maybe I was. If Mom and Dad had known about this four years ago, maybe Craig could have lived with us. Eduardo came outside, holding his pink skirts up and grinning as wide as the front door. Unabashedly proud of himself, he said. Lover boys, you can thank me by taking me out to dinner sometime, but first I want to go dancing with the two most handsomest ghosts I've ever created. Ha 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 ha. Eduardo grabbed both of us and led us back to the house. Craig resisted. My dad's in there, Craig said. Silly boy, Eduardo said. I made you a mask and I give you permission to stay in that closet as long as you want. Just remember, you're safe with us. Even if I have to help Dylan get dressed. No offense, Dylan but you have the fashion sense of a spatula. Craig pulled the mask back on, and he held my waist as I adjusted the mask. I leaned in and softly said, After a couple of dances, let's blow this popsicle stand. Like a date, Craig said. You're asking me out? Exactly like a date, Mr. Curtis, I said. Somehow, Eduardo got between me and Craig, looped his arms in ours, and said, Is this a private party, or can I claim a finder's fee? You two need to pay me back because all this therapy is exhausting. You're terrible, I said. Eduardo wrinkled his nose in a weird smile and said, Make sure you tell my sexy football player how bad this baby can be. But seriously, you owe me. I guess we do, Craig said, and somehow I knew that under his mask he was smiling. We re-entered the Grand Hall. More people had arrived, but not ghosts, and no one wore anything the color of cotton candy, except Eduardo. We three were unique. We also danced together. That is, until the guy dressed like a football player sauntered over and said, Eduardo, are you trying to make me jealous? Baby, you are the most gorgeous hunka hunka in the room, Eduardo said, wildly batting his fake eyelashes. In seconds, the two of them whirled away. Craig and I danced a little, and he leaned in close, like he wanted to kiss me. But instead, with a trembling voice, he said, Dad's watching. I smiled and said, Let's give him a show. Gently, I eased the mask up, displaying only Craig's mouth and a part of his nose. We gently pressed our lips together. Craig was a little tense, but he eased into our kiss, and his mouth relaxed. Whatever hell he had lived through, the man remembered how to kiss. A little awkward at first, our kiss opened up into something that tugged at my heart. I longed for something intense but I don't think Craig could handle that. He already had a million emotions to process just because of tonight. I'm not going to add to that. The world disappeared around us, and we stopped dancing. Only the feel of his lips on mine mattered. A soft touch with a hint of longing. Our lips seemed to tickle each other, tease each other, and promise something more. Wow, he said, a gentle smile blossoming across his face. He bit his lips, but the smile wouldn't go away. I simply smiled as we leaned together again, waiting for Craig this time, afraid that I'm rushing him. Craig pressed his lips to mine, his lips slightly parted, and our kiss wasn't a tease or a tickle, but a meeting of passions, of inner fires, of a desperate need that Craig had been hiding for too long. When we separated, he gently asked, Would you stand by me? Always, I responded, but a little confused. What do you need? Hold my top hat, he said. I did, and watched as Craig took a deep breath and carefully removed the mask and monocle as he came out to the world.
Are you sure about this? I asked, combing my fingers through his hair to neaten it out. Tucking the mask into an inner pocket of his jacket, Craig nodded and said, You don't hide who you are. I don't want to hide anymore. Is it wrong to be me? He paused, something desperate in his eyes. Is it wrong to be the real me? I gently caressed his cheek and lightly kissed him before I said, I'd like to get to know the real you. I bet he's a nice guy. Craig tried to say something, but he choked up. The tremble in his lips told me how scared he was. The fear in his eyes told me how hard this was for him. I whispered, I'm with you, and took his hand. A smile broke through the fear, and Craig took my hands, and once again we began to twirl and dance, holding each other, two spectral figures in white. We whirled past Eduardo in his pink dress and cotton candy wig, and he smiled and gave us a thumbs up. He should be proud. Somehow he had planned for us to get together, and it worked. I'll have to ask him how he arranged this later. Both of my parents looked at us and beamed. Had they known what Eduardo was up to? Had they helped him? Would they admit to it, even if I asked? Craig's dad looked at us, a little confused. I don't think he recognized his own son. Like thunder, the moment of recognition flashed across his face. The confusion turned dark and hard to read. I don't think Craig saw it. Craig was finally out to the world and finally celebrating who he was, and he was finally having fun. I led us to a different part of the dance floor, away from his dad. Mayor Bunsen, dressed in his all-white costume, walked over to us, lightly tapping his cane as he approached. Excuse me, fellow ghostly cavaliers, he said. I don't mean to interrupt. Well, I guess I do, but I'll make it quick. Am I correct that this is young Craig Small, all grown up, our sheriff's son? I said, yes, sir. But Craig said, it's Craig Curtis now. Craig's hand desperately clenched mine. He must be terrified. And you are Dylan Newley, right? The mayor said. I work with your father. Yes, sir, I said. He's helping Mom bring out some drinks. Do you need to talk to him? I can go get him. I'm here, the mayor said, chuckling, to get my picture taken with you two. It's a gathering of ghosts, kind of fitting in this old house. By the way, you and your family have done an incredible job restoring this place. Absolutely incredible. Maybe in the near future, your family would do me and my wife the honor of a tour? Thank you, sir, I said. When my parents return, we'll ask them. The mayor gestured towards the nearest couple, which happened to be Eduardo and his football player. The mayor smiled as we handed Eduardo our phones for the pictures. When his wife approached, Eduardo, you have the cutest shoes, but honestly, I don't see how you can stand in those heels, she said. Between the heels and his hair, Eduardo has to watch out for airplanes, I teased. Somebody's jealous because he knows how good I look in these shoes, and he can't even walk in flats, Eduardo teased back. As soon as we're done with the pictures, ma'am, do you want to try them on? I'd break my ankles, the mayor's wife said. The mayor, Craig, and I posed for the cameras. The mayor between Craig and me, three ghosts in a row. Then somebody else took a group shot with all of us, that is, the three ghosts, the mayor's wife, and Eduardo and the football player. My parents came over, and we did a family picture with me, my brother. He was a scary clown with a red balloon, and my parents. Then Dad took a couple of me and Eduardo and Craig. Then the mayor said, Why don't we do a family picture with Craig and his dad? I'll go get him, the mayor's wife said. My heart became a lump. Suddenly I was scared, but not for me, for Craig. Craig froze. It took him a second before he answered. I don't think that's a good idea. Why not? The mayor asked. 
Surely you can't still be upset because of that truck incident. It was never about a truck, I said. Whatever do you mean? The mayor's wife answered. Craig, Eduardo said, I swear by my pink wig, and you have to believe me, I had no idea your dad would be here. I'm sorry, I should have thought this through. Craig said nothing. I took Craig's hand. The slight shake in his cold hand chilled me. I quickly said, Craig, how about a night on the town? Mom, Dad, you won't mind if Craig crashed here later. Mom looked a little confused, but she said, Not at all. The spare bedroom has a lot of junk in it, but the bed is usable. Why do I have a feeling this is a coming out party? Dad said. We'll celebrate for breakfast. I bought some of that extra thick bacon today. Eduardo's mouth dropped open. I'm coming over too. Should I bring grape juice or orange juice? And can I bring my football player? Wait a second, the mayor said. Nobody has explained why Dylan and Craig are leaving. Out with it. I looked at Craig. He looked at Eduardo. Eduardo looked at his pink nails. I suspect Mom and Dad had figured things out. Craig, Dylan, take a breath, the mayor said, and tell me why you are leaving. It wasn't any of us that finally said anything. Sheriff Small cleared his throat and said, They're leaving because of me. The mayor's wife raised her eyebrows. Eduardo raised his perfectly shaped eyebrows. Sheriff Small stared at the punch bowl rather than any of us as he spoke. I've been living a lie. Mayor, there was no truck involved. You have to understand, I was raised thinking that being gay was a sin. They'd go to hell, and people who associated with them would get cast out as well. Then the school counselor called, and the nightmare began. Get over to the school and pick up Craig. Craig had been bullying the gay students again, his second strike and would receive a five-day suspension. If it happened again, it would go to the district safe school committee, and Craig would be banned from football and be banned from the district for one semester. He'd have to go to school in Missoula. I told them that that was stupid. It's high school. Kids pick on kids all the time. They told me that if I don't do my job as a father, they will do their job as his school. Nobody cared that I was the sheriff. I picked up my son and we had a sit-down along with my wife. Craig came out to me and I learned my own son was gay. Turns out he thought that bullying gay students would make me proud as well as hide the fact that he was gay. We fought for hours and I preached every scripture I knew. He wouldn't have any of it. Then he screamed he'd rather be an atheist than be anything like a homophobe like me. Then he told me he had a crush on a guy. I didn't take it well. I slapped him. We screamed at each other for an hour, and, just like the good book says, if an eye offend you, pluck it out. I solved the problem the old biblical way. I told Craig he wasn't welcome in my house anymore, and he had thirty minutes to grab whatever he wanted and to get out. I never wanted to see him again. My wife called her brother down in Vegas, and he must have left immediately. It's a twelve-hour drive, and he was here in exactly twelve hours. I haven't spoken to, or seen, or heard from my son since. That's the gist of it, Craig said. He looked at me. A seriously deep pain ran through his eyes. His hand momentarily went to his left cheek, as if remembering an old wound. My dad hates me because I fell in love with a man. With you, Dylan. Mom later told me that dad got so angry that after I left, he destroyed everything of mine that I hadn't taken with me. All my football trophies, clothes, pictures, my old bike, my old yearbooks. Everything. I had nothing except what I had crammed into an old suitcase and the back of my uncle's car. His hand holding his cheek quickly dropped to his side and he stared at nothing, as if he was remembering a nightmare. With the despair in his eyes, Craig looked at me, and I understood everything on a gut level. He bullied me to prove to his dad he wasn't gay, 
but deep down, Craig had loved me. I forgave him instantly, and he started to cry. I stepped behind Craig, wrapped my arms about him, and gently hugged him. Do you still have feelings for me? I asked. Craig nodded. You can't imagine how the guilt has eaten me, and I wanted for so long to tell you. I came back to Triple Falls because I had to say I'm sorry for all those years of being mean. I'm sorry I wasn't a better person. I'm sorry I was too much of a coward to stand up to Dad. I wish I had talked to you. It's all in the past, I said. We started fresh, remember? Eduardo, in his pink heels and cotton candy hair and his football player, stood in front of me and Craig. He turned to Craig and said, You okay, honey? You let us run interference. I simply held Craig, suddenly glad Eduardo was on our side. Your mother left me, Sheriff Small said. She called me a monster. It took me a year before I realized how badly I screwed up, but then it was too late. I finally told my parents what had really happened, and they told me that that was the dumbest scripture in the whole Bible, because if you cast out everybody who disagreed with you, it wouldn't be long before you were hated and alone. I should have apologized sooner, but my pride got in the way. It got in the way of a lot of things. Somebody placed his hands on my shoulders. My dad. He simply said, Don't you love your boy? I thought I did, the sheriff said. Then my beliefs destroyed my family. Dad, Craig said, steel in his voice, I'll never live with you again and I'll never forgive you. His hand clenched into a fist, but he was still shaking. Standing up to his dad terrified him. I'm only asking for a second chance, son, the sheriff said. Give me a good reason why I should allow it, Eduardo said, or Craig should give it. There was silence. Mayor Bunsen looked at us, and then at the sheriff. Mom softly said, Craig, I'll put fresh sheets on the extra bed. Stay with us until you head back to Vegas. Sheriff Small looked from one to another, his eyes pleading. It seemed as if he moved towards Craig, but Eduardo and his big brawny football player with too many muscles got in the way. The atmosphere became icy as we all stared at Sheriff Small. Then I stepped in, still holding Craig, and I said, Forgiveness has to be earned. What will you do to earn Craig's forgiveness? Sheriff Small attempted to smile, but it vanished. Then he said, Maybe we can start with a cup of coffee and some conversation. Monday morning, seven at the diner. We'll keep it short because I have to be at work at eight, and you can bring whoever you want so you can feel safe. I can apologize, and I'll finally do what I should have done for years. I'll get to know my own son. The rest of the party went smoothly, and after our late night date, Craig stayed with me, and we talked all night. Not just casual talk, but deep, soul kind of talk. He told me things that made me realize just how lucky I was to have mom and dad on my side. Monday morning, Eduardo must have gotten the word out. He is pretty well known around Triple Falls because every letter of the LGBTQIA plus showed up at the diner, including the drag queens in full costume. Eduardo was in his sexy nurse costume with a huge blonde wig and fishnet stockings and his football player boy toy came too. In real life, the football player was an accountant. Who knew? Craig was one of our community and we were there for him, in force. Every single one of us know how hard it can be to come out. Craig had been alone before but he wasn't now. It was funny to see the look on Sheriff Small's face when he realized what he had just walked into, but he must be serious about rebuilding trust with his son, because he walked in anyway. His first words were, you don't know how sorry I am. I'm happy to say their first conversation remained light and casual and went well. 
Epilogue. Craig stayed with me and my family for the next two weeks before he had to go back to Vegas. Specifically, he stayed in the spare bedroom for a couple of nights. Then with me. Craig and me met the sheriff four more times for coffee and one time for lunch. Though they were tense meetings, neither Craig or the sheriff lost their cool. Maybe there's hope. The sheriff asked me all kinds of questions about the LGBTQIA plus movement. I think I changed his mind about a lot of things. He had to make some hard decisions. What was more important, his son or his beliefs? There was no middle ground. He chose his son. And though it was a rough start, and we talked about the weather a lot, there were a few breakthroughs. Though he seemed uncomfortable when Craig and I held hands, Sheriff Small didn't say anything. Craig and I took things slow as well, not only because he lived 12 hours away, but because we had a lot of healing to do. Christmas time, Craig came back up to Triple Falls. He and his dad celebrated Christmas with my family. Maybe in time, Craig and his dad could even become friends. Craig and I did become a lot more than friends. I had a choice to make. Should I leave Triple Falls and move to Vegas to live with Craig full-time? Or keep our relationship on the serious side of casual and stay where nothing changes? Face it, I'm a small-town boy. Big cities scare me. I made my choice. It was time to leave the safety of the known and head off to the scary. I wouldn't be alone because Craig was by my side. Craig and I held our wedding at my parents' house, inside the Grand Hall. Eduardo was our best man of honor. He looked great in turquoise, and you should have seen his shoes. Craig and I wore our ghost tuxedos, and the mayor, also in his ghost tuxedo, married us. The relationship between Sheriff Small and Craig remained awkward and stiff. Maybe it always would be. But Sheriff Small did walk Craig down the aisle. Craig changed his name again, and we became Dylan and Craig Newley. After our honeymoon in Niagara Falls, I moved to Vegas full-time to live with Craig, and I have never regretted it. You should see the old house we're renovating, and every Halloween, we dress up as ghosts. The End I'm Gio. And thank you for listening. If you'd like to hear more stories about men falling in love, please visit my channel or even subscribe. New stories are available every Wednesday. Peace.